Welcome to our lesson where we're going to show you how to construct a risk tolerance threshold ratio. First we need to remind you that trading is a risky endeavor and not suitable for all investors. We certainly mean this. It is true we've learned that if you have bad habits in life they tend to be magnified in your trading. How to build a risk tolerance threshold ratio? Let's get right to it. First we would need to give you a key. That is we would have to define the time periods which we're going to measure to create that ratio. Here they are the primary pattern nine months to two and a half years. Secondary pattern two and a half months to eight and a half months. Day-to-day -day pattern one month to as long as two and a half months. Our long-term micro two weeks to a month. Our short-term micro one week to two weeks. These are our five basic time patterns. Any patterns higher than these and they tend to be untradeable because of the risk because they're so long term while any time frames lower than these they tend to be a little too sensitive a little too jumpy. Let's get right to the charts to draw these and we can reference back to the key here to give us the time frames. We've chosen to do the ratio for the Australian dollar, first we need to calculate our primary pattern. Let's go back to the key primary nine months to two and a half years, right? Let's keep it simple. Let's just go right out two and a half years and see where that leaves us. So currently we're at the beginning of 2013, so 2012, 2011, 2010. You can see the dates at the bottom. So I'm all, that's going back three years. So I'm essentially going to take that the high point and the low point uh, over that period and I'm going to draw a retracement of that. In this case the low point occurred first so we're going to go low to high. So all I'm going to do is use my retracement tool and I'm going to mark out a 618 retracement level and that's the Fibonacci level. I will say that markets tend to have their favorite ratios that they follow and you'll see that over time and through experience by measuring the different retracements how they do tend to be repetitive. For this example we're going with the old standard 618 retracement. So going back over the two and a half year period we went low to high. We measured that out. There's our 618 level. We're going to mark that now. As long as price is remaining above that 618 level we could say that this longer term primary pattern is bullish. So let's mark that on the chart. This way I can remove the frame. I don't have all those lines on the chart. I just have one line on the chart. As long as price is trading above that line, then our primary pattern is bullish. Okay, our primary pattern is bullish. We're going to go back and mark that now. Okay, I've put it on there so we can mark that as being up. And we'll, we'll color it green. So our primary pattern in this case is up. We next need to calculate our secondary pattern. The secondary pattern would be two and a half months to eight and a half months. Let's do the same exercise. Go back to the chart and we can go back over that period. Go back, oh, about eight, nine months and that here we'll count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It happens to be right at eight months. Uh, anything less than nine months and you're going to capture that secondary pattern. So same exercise. And as long as you're above that 618 level, then that pattern's bullish. So in other words, a market move can retrace up to 618, depending on the, the tendencies, uh, sometimes more. But generally a market can retrace as much as 618 and still maintain its pattern. In this case, we're well above that 618 level. I'm going to mark that on the chart. And we're also going to mark that. So our secondary pattern is bullish. So we can see that our primary pattern is bullish and our secondary pattern is also bullish. So let's plug that into the ratio so we can keep track of this. There you can see we plugged in both the primary and secondary. They're both up. Next we need to calculate that day to day. I can tell you from experience as a swing trader, shorter term trader, the day to day pattern extremely influential extremely influential pattern the most influential pattern if you are a short-term trader or a swing trader 
So we need to calculate that all-important day-to-day pattern next. The day-to-day -day pattern happens to be one month to two and a half months. The day-to-day -day pattern is so important because it reflects the day-to-day -day news flow in a market. So we're going to drop down to a four-hour chart. And on that four-hour chart, uh, we can go back two and a half months or so. In this case, you can see right at the low point on the chart, I'll actually show you where the previous day-to-day -day shifted because that, that's going to help you. If I go back two and a half months now, two and a half months, that would be the low. So the, this is the previous day-to-day -day pattern we're going to show you. We're taking that low and we're going to slide that up to the high. And you can see what happened here. Look at the market started yo-yoing around there. We looks like we saw consolidation at that area, probably some distribution. It, it continued to chip away, making lower lows in that area. Finally, that area gave way. So we had a pretty good idea here the third time below it where it couldn't hold and you continued to close below it that that day-to-day -day pattern was shifting. So the day-to-day -day pattern did shift south right here. It shifted bearish right there. So the new day-to-day -day pattern is going to be from this high point, that's the highest point on the chart, right? Going back a couple of months, yes, that would be it. So there's the day-to-day -day pattern, the high, and uh, down, we track that down to the low. So as long as you're below that 618 level right there, then the, your day-to-day -day pattern is going to be lower. So that's going to be your new day-to-day -day level, and because it's resistance, we'll color that orange, and we'll mark that on the chart. And our day-to-day -day is down. If we jump out to a daily chart, we can see now the three patterns that we have recorded. Primary pattern's up, secondary's up, but I have that day-to-day -day shifted down. Again, day-to-day -day important pattern for us. For myself, I tend to be a shorter-term trader, swing trader. That's the most important pattern. So I'm going to plug that into my ratio now. That I'm going to record that, that the day-to-day -day pattern is down. And now you can see it's starting to fill out. If you're a shorter term trader, you'd have some concern because that day to day is down now. Next, we need to figure out our uh, longer term micro pattern. That tends to be two weeks to one month. Let's calculate that. Four hour or a hourly chart, you could probably calculate that. So we'll, we'll go back a couple of weeks on that. That would be what? One, two, oh, three weeks or so. Uh, two and a half weeks. That'll, that'll capture it right there. That's going to be our long-term micro pattern. And you can see it's very close to that that day-to-day -day pattern. I'll just copy that line and we'll mark that. So that longer-term micro would be down also. So if we pan out to the daily now, we're getting a pretty good idea of how this is looking. No doubt the long-term pattern is influential on a hot, the higher time frames. Nonetheless, these, these intermediate-term time frames are very influential for, for shorter term traders and swing traders, you're starting to see the pattern. Now it's starting to take shape, and we're keeping track of these. And hopefully, you see what we're doing here. Ideally, you want to keep track of a ratio, this ratio, or something very similar for the different markets you follow. It's going to help you to stay organized. Definitely, an organized mind is going to help you in your trading to acquire that all important trader's mindset. This is one way we do it of, of keeping organized. Now let's calculate that short-term micro. That's going to be one week to two weeks. Well, I think we can go to an hourly chart to calculate that. So if we go, we're on an hourly chart. So if we go back one, two, three, four, five days, we take just the high, the low over that five-day period, and we run that down. That's telling us that our short-term micro pattern is down now. Okay, there we can see we've got them all on the chart. And now if we pan out to the daily, we can see how everything's aligned here. You can see that you actually have the majority of patterns down now. So despite those long-term patterns up, we have the majority of them down. So here now we have the majority of patterns on there. And you can see that the majority of them are down from the primary on down to the short-term micro, you have three down and two up. In other words, the collective pattern of the Aussie right now is lower. So this is a market where we would be looking to sell rallies, taking sell signals following rallies, otherwise looking to take sell signals because our risk tolerance threshold ratio is bearish. It's telling us the collective pattern in the Aussie 
is down. I'll give you a quick example of this on the lower time frame chart. Let me go back to when that day-to-day -day pattern shifted. That day-to-day -day pattern. Remember the day-to-day? -day? We said it's it's a, a month to two two and a half months. So we went back two and a half months, and that was happened in the low. Say so we didn't have uh, hindsight here. So if we go back two and a half months, that's the low. So at the time, that was our day-to-day -day pattern. So that's when that day-to-day -day shifted, right? Let me draw that retracement and we can show you exactly when it shifted and how we would have taken advantage of it and why we were focusing on sell signals in the Aussie this this week. There we've got it. That's that 618 level that we're focusing on right there with that day-to-day -day pattern shifted. Let me scroll down to a four hour and you can see that the level was giving way here, here, and here. By the time close blow it a couple of times here the third time you had a pretty good idea that level was not going to hold if I uh, pan out to the daily you can see you actually had a daily close below it right there so with that daily close below it that's when that's when we make the determination that the day-to-day -day pattern has shifted and that happens to be if you look at the date at the bottom that happens to be 2-1 so on the close of 2-1 we had a day-to-day -day pattern shift so on 2-1 that's when we knew the majority of patterns were down. The collective pattern was down in the Aussie. So now if we go back to an hourly chart and go back to 2-1, uh, here it is actually, the here's 2-1. So on the close of 2-1, we had that pattern shift. So now you look at just using a, a simple tactic uh, such as selling a, a trend line break. Remember, the majority of patterns are down, so we're just looking for sell signals at that point. So you can see that you would have had some success in taking those simple sell signals and getting short on those counter trend line breaks in this market. And the reason we are focusing on these sell signals is, again, because our risk tolerance threshold ratio was telling us to. In other words, the market itself was telling us to focus on sell signals because the market was telling us that the majority of patterns were lower. Of course, we understand what that's telling us when we see a, a pattern shift. That's telling us that there's a shift in the underlying fundamental conditions in the market because, after all, the pattern is just that. The patterns we see are a reflection of those all-important underlying fundamental conditions. So when a pattern shifts, it's telling us the underlying conditions are shifting in the market also. If you're interested in more information, you want to know more about what we do, you can go to Trading University and find out more details on our master's trading program. Also, if you want to get things going maybe a little bit quicker, if you open a live account with Forex.com, FXCM, or Handtech, you receive Trading University's master's trading program for free. For details of that, just go to eostrade.com.